this section of the program, we'll concentrate on tripping pipe and laying it down. Some actions during tripping can damage pipes. Let's first see what they are and how to avoid them. As you know, the saver sub protects the pin end of the top drive or Kelly. If it gets damaged, that damage will be passed on to each box you mate it to. That means every single tool joint box. A piece of equipment that gets that much use is bound to get worn. You should inspect it regularly. Corrosion is another potential problem. It can start if you leave mud on a pipe that's out of the hole. Always clean the mud off with a rubber pipe wiper. As pipe is exposed to oxygen, it begins to corrode, forming small pits called corrosion cells. At first they're microscopic, but in time they'll develop and the area will be weakened. Low pH mud, hydrogen sulfide, a lack of corrosion inhibitors, damage from slips and tongs, all these things will make matters worse and the little pits will deepen, spread and eventually cause failures. Use a good pipe wiper while you're tripping out to strip away most of the mud. Don't use worn wipers. Compared to the cost of the pipe, they're cheap. If possible, wash the pipe inside as well as out. If the internal protective plastic coating has worn or flaked off, the inside surface can corrode just as easily as the outside. Sometimes you can add an inhibitor to the trip tank. This will help to protect the pipe as it's pulled out of the hole. You can also wipe the inhibitor on the pipe as it's tripped out. Before you start a trip, plan where your brakes are going to be. If you broke at joints 1, 4, 7 and 10 last trip, this time break at 2, 5, 8 and 11. And next time at 3, 6, 9 and 12. This is known as rotating the brakes. Rotating the brakes should be done on every trip. This distributes wear and gives each joint equal running time between brakes. The driller should note in the IADC daily drilling reports. Each time you make a break, check the joint for proper breakout torque. It should be about 90% of your makeup torque. If you think there's too much or too little, check your torquing procedure and equipment. Sometimes people use the old technique of hitting the pipe with a hammer to make sure all the mud's drained out of it. Don't do this. It will dent the pipe and stress or weaken it in that area, and that could cause problems downhole. As the elevators are lowered, push them away from the pipe. If they hit the tool joint box, its shoulder may be seriously damaged. This type of damage isn't repairable in the field. Don't pull the pipe out of the hole too fast. That'll cause swabbing, which can easily create kick conditions or damage the hole so badly that it becomes a total loss. Tripping into the hole too fast is just as serious. You could lose circulation, damage the hole, and even cause a blowout and lose the hole completely. Remember, when you're setting the slips, stop all movement of the pipe first. Place the slips, then gently set both pipe and slips into the rotary. By following this procedure, a lot of damage which could cause failures in the slip area will be prevented. Always use both tongs when making up or breaking out the tool joints. A pipe handler torque wrench system, if your rig is so equipped, is even better. Using just one tong can do serious damage, like bending the pipe by putting unnecessary stress on it. Remember, if the pipe turns in the slips, the slip dies will cut circular gouges in it. The same thing can happen if the backup tongs fail to bite on the tool joint properly, or if you don't take the slack out of the safety line. Where there are gouges, you'll get cracks, corrosion, and even twist-offs or washouts. A twist-off is a complete break or separation in the pipe body or tool joint caused by metal fatigue. A washout is a fluid cut opening caused by fluid leakage. Rotate out slowly, keeping just enough tension on the hook spring 
to bring the pin high enough to clear the box and shoulder when the threads disengage. If there's too much tension, the threads will bind more than they need to. When you're breaking out wet connections, stop the rotary as quickly as possible after the threads have disengaged. If rotation continues, it could gall the threads. Again, push the pin away from the box area as soon as it's clear. Don't stand pins in mud. It'll harden in the thread area and could cause makeup problems when you put them back into the hole. Keep the setback area clean and in good condition. If the flooring's worn, pools of mud will collect, so change it. Keep stands of pipe clean and tidy too. They should be straight and uniform. If one sets outside where it should be, pick it up with the travelling blocks elevator and reposition it. Don't use a pipe jack for the job. It'll damage the shoulder area of the pin. And the old way of repositioning a stand of pipe by hitting the tool joint with a sledgehammer is a very bad idea, for obvious reasons. Now, if mud conditions permit, wash the inside of the next box. The water will stay on top of the mud for a while, then as you pull the pipe out, it'll wash the mud off the inside wall of the pipe. Now, check the box. There should still be some dope in the thread area. If the connection's dry, it's always bad news. It means that the connection was made up dry, or that the joint has leaked because it's damaged or been under-torqued. Check the threads and shoulder for galls. If there aren't any, check to see if there's been any leaking around the shoulder. If you find either of these things, remove both mating joints from the string for repair. If you leave them there, you'll end up with a fishing job, attempting to recover the separated pipe lost in the well bore. If the box is OK and there's still some dope left, redope it with the 40 to 60% metallic zinc compound so that it's ready for its next trip back into the hole. You need to be just as careful when you're laying pipe down. Washing the pipe is particularly important. It's going to be racked and out of the hole for a while, so you've got to remove all corrosive materials and, if possible, spray, wipe or dip it with inhibitors. If you fill the mouse hole with inhibitor and dip the pipe in it, that'll offer the best possible protection against corrosion. Make sure the inside of the pipe is well flushed. It's got a protective plastic coating, but that's less than one thirty-second of an inch thick. When it's been in service for a while, it'll start to flake off. So to stop these areas corroding, you have to get rid of all the mud and other corrosive elements. There are usually small microscopic pits on the outside surface. These are caused by natural corrosive action, and pipe wipers can't strip the mud from them effectively. To stop them becoming a problem, give the pipe a careful wash down as it's pulled from the hole. Once again, use two tongs for breaking out. Place them properly on the tool joints, never on the hard facing, and never overlapping the opposing joint. Slowly rotate the pipe out, keeping the proper hook snobber or top drive counterbalance tension. To lay down the pipe, set the joint gently into the mouse hole. Now fix the hoist cable securely and lift the joint out. Put a thread protector on the pin end before you lower it down the V-door. As you roll the pipe to the rack, check it for straightness. If it's bent, separate it from the other pipes for repair. When the pipe's safely in the rack, it's time for a thorough cleanup. Each joint will have to be thoroughly inspected. Take off the thread protector and clean it and the tool joint. Get rid of all dope, dirt and foreign matter. Use a stiff wire brush to loosen the dirt. Then rinse the surfaces with either kerosene or Farsol. Remember, if you use diesel oil, it'll leave a film behind, which will stop the next coating of dope sticking to it. So make sure you get rid of it completely by using soapy water, then rinsing with clean, fresh water. Now that it's clean, you can inspect the tool joint. Do it carefully. First look closely at the threads, checking for galls, burned threads, 
damage or excessive wear. If you've got a thread profile gauge, use it to check whether the pin has been stretched. If you haven't, use a straight edge. If the crowns don't line up, the pin's probably stretched. Get it checked by qualified personnel. Check the shoulder area carefully. You're looking for things like shearing, galls, evidence of washouts, or any distortion like belling or splitting. Next, check the tool joint for eccentric wear. That's when the tool joint's wall is thinner on one side of the joint than the other. First look head-on, then at the taper. If either of them looks higher on one side than the other, take the joint of pipe out of the string and inspect it more thoroughly. If the walls are evenly worn but very thin, again mark the joint and pull it from the string. You can check API publication RP7G for specifications on tool joint wear. Never run worn joints next to new joints. If there's minor damage to the pin or box area, mark the tool joint with a band of green paint. This shows that it's field repairable and needs further inspection. If the joint's seriously damaged, mark it with red paint, which shows that it needs shop repair or has to be scrapped. As you're rolling pipes, check that they're straight. If a joint's bent, take it out of the rack to be straightened. Never run bent pipe into the hole. As it turns down hole, the outside of the bend will get badly worn. It could also damage the adjoining pipe. Be careful not to damage pipe when you're stacking it. All joints should have thread protectors on them. Make sure all the boxes are parallel in the pipe bins or on the rack. This will stop hard facing rubbing on the pipe body while the pipe's in transit. Put spacers between each row. They can be made of wood or wire rope. Normally we use two spacers, but always check the procedure for your particular area. Line them up vertically so that the pipe weight is on the spacers and not on an unsupported section of pipe. This will help to stop the pipe being bent or damaged while in storage or transit. Don't put hooks into the unprotected tool joints to lift the pipe. It damages the threads and protective coating, and it doesn't support the pipe in the middle, which could cause it to bend. Instead, lift them carefully with chain or wire rope wraps near the upset area. If it's a horizontal lift, use tag lines and fit slings at both ends. When you're picking up and laying down pipe at the rig floor, always use a lifting cap shackled on the lifting line or a single joint elevator. And make sure no one uses the V-door stairs while you're lifting. Those are the basics of tripping out and laying down. Let's just summarize them. Always check the saver sub for damage and wear. Use a good pipe wiper and wash the pipe down inside and out. If necessary, use several wipers to get rid of all the mud. Push the elevators away from the pipe as they're lowered. Don't trip in and out of the hole too quickly. If mud conditions permit, wash the pipe as it's being pulled. Rotate the brake each trip. Always stop the pipe before you set the slips. Always use two tongs, never only one unless the rig has a pipe handler torque wrench system. Keep the setback area clean. If you have to reposition stands, use the hoisting blocks or elevators. Inspect the box and pin for damage or signs of leaking. Dope the box and pin using 40 to 60% metallic zinc compound by weight. When coming out of the hole and laying pipe down, always apply a rubber wiper. Thoroughly wash the inside and outside of the pipe for storage. Put thread protectors on boxes and pins before lowering them down the V-door. Clean the joints and body of the pipe thoroughly, inspecting them for damage at every step. Apply a rust inhibitor. Use wood or wire rope spacers between rows to keep tool joints apart. Align them vertically along the length of the pipe. 
And finally, be careful when you lift pipe. Use the recommended technique.